We obviously have a elections official here now, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really want to just have open discussion about it, but I asked Beth to give us, to bring the job description. Is it up front? You can lead the talk. No. <laughs> you know, we've, all, we've all heard from our constituents. We, we know this is coming back to the council, and I just think we should have some open conversation about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, not to sway anybody one way or another, but just to look at the job description. and Because I think there's a lot of thought that, you know, either way we go, oh, we're not going to have any control if we do this or do that. That's not true. You know, job descriptions are job descriptions, and we should be looking at them, and if we see something we want to look at and talk about, we should be doing that. That's all it is. It's really an open discussion. Yeah, that's the same draft that you received previously, I think it's back in October, uh, when we started preliminary discussions. So the red represents what we want to add to it, and what's a dark gray? Yeah, red is, is the additions, uh, and then, um, well, actually, I think those are second additions, but the shaded were additions, initial additions, and then anything that has a stripe through in it um, will be taken off. Would be proposed to eliminate. I don't know. Yeah, I think. That's what we, you know, we've seen before, but right. just, I yep. just want to put it out in front of anybody. And it's really open discussion, and it's, it can be 10 minutes, it can be whatever you want, but I just want to, you know, want you guys to have, you know, we, we, we can't all sit together and be, so we can't, where we really open discuss this, unless it's a council meeting, you know, so let's, let's discuss it tonight. Thoughts, you know, what you're hearing, or I don't know, anything, anything that's on your mind about this topic. As far as the qualifications, or as far as the requirements, is that what you're asking, or are you yeah, asking I mean, about whether we would prefer uh, someone being elected to this position, or someone I don't, being I don't appointed really, to that? I think what I want to do is clarify. I've heard, and I haven't talked to everybody because I can't. Obviously, you know, we can't all sit and talk, but. I'm hearing a lot from constituents, my own in my own district, that oh well, if you do this, you you know if you make it appointed or whatever, you you know you lose all this control. And we've all heard that. I'm sure we have. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't I don't think a job you know if you do a job description and you do the things right, you, I don't see where you lose all that. So mm -hmm. I'm just throwing it out there for everybody to look at and talk about. I'm not trying to you know mm -hmm. I'm not trying to to, to, to you can. Voice your opinions, certainly. It's an open session here. I mean, we're not on, I don't think we're on TV, are we? That's what I want to have meeting for. And then, you know, I obviously want to have Kurt so. in his group present, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a concern. I voted to have it appointed at the time we had the meeting. Mm -hmm. And I guess my concern was. I guess I, I'm concerned about control. If the city clerk's office, for example, I'm trying to come up with some examples, but let's say closes their office at noon on a regular basis. And that's a time where a person could go in and do fill out forms or whatever they have business during their lunch hour. So then they're inconvenienced and so forth. And who has control over that? The city clerk, as a separate entity, can just do that. And, um, or like, for example, if the city clerk's absent uh, for a period of time, who, who goes over and talks to the city clerk? We could talk to the city clerk, <coughs> and we could talk to the city clerk, but there's no control over that. But if it's appointed, and you have rigorous job description, and you have a bigger pool of candidates because you can go outside the city, you could get a qualified candidate that if there's something that needs to be addressed, can be addressed by the common council, alder persons, or the mayor through that process. But I have had calls saying they wish that they would be elected because it, it, it uh, then the city, the tax, the uh, electorate has voice into that position. So I've had pushback, not pushback, but I have that input. Mm 
and I appreciate that. Uh, but after sharing why why I thought it would be good for appointed, they could understand that. So it's not like one way is good or bad. It's just that logic of how people perceive it, and that I told them I didn't want to not honor the vote. Uh, I think it was in 2009, whatever that vote was. In fact, I voted to have an elected position because I didn't know what the city clerk position was. Mm -hmm. I walked in at the time. And should it be a, a elected? And I said, sure. But now knowing the role of the city clerk, which is basically, in my mind, an administrative management bookkeeping type of position, awfully close to the assistant uh, to the mayor position, and, that, and we hired that person. To me, it's almost the same type of tasks if you look through what they, what he or she would have to do. And so I, that's where I'm thinking. It's, it, they don't vote for any ordinances. They don't vote for the, anything with regard to the budget. They don't vote for, they, there's no voting detail, but it's more management. And that's where I'm coming from, right or wrong, but that's where I, my thought process. So. I would reiterate all of that. Um, when I see a position uh, such as a human resource director or public works director, uh, fire chief, police chief, uh, all these positions that the city council appoints with the mayor's direction, these are very highly skilled, highly qualified positions that uh, have generally have quite a lot of educational background. When I see the city clerk's position not being necessarily uh, anything having to do with policy decisions and the history of the election process with the city clerk's position, to me it looks like a one-person beauty contest. And uh, generally when that one person runs, that's the person that gets elected or elected. But that does not necessarily give the Wisconsin Rapid Citizens the best person in that position. So uh, I am very much in favor of the city council utilizing its authority that the citizens gave us to put the best person in that position. Uh, when you have one person on the ballot, that is not always uh, the best person for the job. And I also would say uh, when it is an elected position, I think there might be people that are very highly qualified that might be younger looking for some stability in their uh, housing and in, with their family that don't want that election cycle coming up every uh, few years. They want something that they say, if I do a good job, I'm going to be here forever. You know, I'm going to uh, make sure that the citizens are, and, and this council and the city staff are treated and uh, are given the best effort that I have. So treated well, I'm given the best effort I have. So that's my position. Else, well, I think you all know what my position is, and it hasn't changed. Uh, but, uh, uh, and that uh, uh, stay, I guess, with the uh, elected position. But uh, I think just uh, uh, again that if it's an appointee from whoever the mayor may be that then what keeps a future mayor from making a change who they want to be in there. That does not, that I see anyway, that that person stays. <coughs> um, no matter what job you're doing, good, bad, or indifferent, whatever we want to say. If yeah, and whoever the mayor is wants, 
if they would want somebody else to appoint to that position, can do that. And I hate to say it, but um, I don't know that I've seen a council yet that would reject what the mayor, a mayor, would put out there as an appointee. I would have to, in all my years of being on, um, and, and I could be wrong, maybe some of the research back of uh, uh, appointees being uh, rejected. And so I guess what I'm saying is that there could be with changes of mayors could be uh, changes in um, the clerk's position. Granted, and I'm not going to argue that times have changed in qual uh, maybe what the rules all are, to use the, rule, to use the word of rules of what has changed, legality or whatever, but how many clerks has the city gone through in the last 40 years? How many? Point taken. I mean, uh, and they've been elected, and they've been elected. Well, and and of course times have changed, but we've also had two and a half months now since we've had notification of the clerk resigning, and we're sitting at this point now again. But I have three months, almost three months, I agree with almost you, three months ago. I would argue part of, that's, part of that's our issue. The person that resigned, they said they were going to work till December 18th, right? Right? Granted, but we're not that, picking out on the well, person, but I'm saying well, we would have done that, something sooner if we wanted with that, though, Okay, but with that, though, even say, say somebody said, I'm going to resign two months from now. Okay, here's my note. I'm going to continue to work. I think that's what happened, right? But somebody could be. I'm not arguing oh, with you. Okay. I'm not we, could, we could have found a way in the meantime to have somebody in there to. Well, I think we probably. Well, the clerk can't just... be appointed until the vacancy happens. Right. So and I it was December 18th. The clerk until December 18th. The council okay. accepted okay. that resignation. You know, you can't blame us on. Okay. Mr. Blazer or anybody, he, okay. we accepted that December 18th, and we said we'll call him. And, and, and as long as we're at that point, how many how many of us have talked to the clerk since he resigned and asked about anything? I so, have. Okay, so I mean, so we if you have called him, the clerk, they've answered my questions. Mm -hmm. We also. And I'm still torn on this issue, Tom, mm -hmm. so I'm not telling yeah. you. I'm, I'm listening to my constituents, yeah. to be honest with you right now. And I've heard that from my constituents, which mm -hmm. you said, just to be honest. But, but my point with the job description, and Tom, I'll let you talk in a second, but my point in the job description was, we say, you know, there's no control even if you elect. I mean, I'm an elected official. I, I don't know. I come to all the meetings because I feel it's an obligation. There's got to be some control you can have on a clerk who's making $63,000 a year. There's got to be some control that we can't have it. And we got to look at the job description, the pay scale, and everything. But it might, it might. That's the vision. Pat? I would say with, uh, with an appointed position, this is not necessarily, this is not, not even not necessarily, it's not the, the mayor's best buddy or whatever. People will go through a vetting process, an interview process, and collaboration of uh, different steps to choose the right person then it would be put in front of the council not just not just one person so uh, when that person is appointed and I would assume Beth goes through uh, maybe a, a job evaluation maybe annually I would assume a lot of our city staff does you know to if, if we have some deficiencies uh, then that can be addressed in a in elected position you have no control at all I mean you have none so uh, but but my point there was we're all elected I mean there aside from <laughs> somebody's got our commitment we're all here right 
you're not full time but, officers. Well, that's true. And it's a huge difference. When one of us is gone, like one of us is gone right now, this body can still function. Right. Okay. When that city clerk is gone, that cannot function. We didn't function in the last month in this on this exact issue because two people were absent and the council didn't have the guts to take action other than one person. I think we the need was to hold it off because two people were absent. Okay. I didn't think we had to hold it over because of that. So obviously this council could not function missing people. And I actually have a hard time with that, that we can take a any action. That we should take any action when anybody is absent on any issue. I don't care how trivial somebody may think it is. Yeah. I think we're really, not there's no trivial issues because they're important to somebody. So but, 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 right, but that is right. Some may think it's trivial. And yeah. some may have well, thought. We're that, not giving that no, no, Okay, but I, I think that. I think this one was big enough that we want yeah. a full council there. That's okay. okay. This is a big issue, right? And, and, but we're all here from our constituents but, about. But if we don't, what if, what if somebody's missing again? Are we going to automatically then hold it over? I think the reason, I think the reason actually was not taken in previous meetings is because we needed a unanimous. No. Yeah, I think it was. But you know, you need, you need unanimous. You needed unanimous that night because only six were there. Okay, you, you would need six votes. But the the body, you guys, the body determined that you wanted to hold it over. You do right, right, questions and, all the time. Right, right. So but the unanimous the majority but, vote. But the unanimous is not that other than that night because only no. six were present. No, you would need you would need six to have a quorum to have a meeting to have a vote, and you would have needed all six of those mm -hmm. to vote in favor in order to mm -hmm. pass the charter ordinance. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's but, correct. So. So you didn't need a unanimous vote to pass it the first time, well, I'm saying first it, reading? Well, oh, at the first reading, yes, your rules provide that right. that every ordinance has a first reading, which implies that there's a reading and then it comes back for a passage. But then you changed, you a few years ago you said, well, but we'll allow ordinances to go, to be passed at the first meeting if everyone agrees right. and there's no dissent right. that could pass. So you had your first reading, you had a vote, it wasn't unanimous. It didn't really even matter what the vote was. It didn't pass the threshold of being passed. Mm -hmm. So that was considered the first reading, and now you're waiting for your, you know, the, the vote. And that was assumed to occur at your next meeting, you know, provided that you all agree. Well, that's <laughs> well I mean, my point on bringing it up, because believe me, and in no way, shape, or form, am I going to pick on any former clerk because. When I called, I got my answer. So I'm not going to sit here in front of anybody and say, whatever that person resigned or whatever, when I called, I got my answers. Okay, or maybe I had to go to Sue, you know, and the assistant or whatever, but I got my answers. So to say to say you had no use of a clerk for two and a half months, I think that's, you know, now the clerk wasn't at the meetings on Tuesdays, but oh, I think great. that's a little pretentious to say we didn't have the use because anytime I called, Mr. Blazer answered me, I'll tell you that. Yeah, and we're not discussing this because of the, of the past clerk. We're discussing it because he resigned, and this is the opportunity, if we were to change, to take that change. But and we're saying we don't have control way. the other way. You do have control even with the elected official. I think we can put something. I'll be really blunt. I don't think the council has, if there truly was a performance issue where somebody wasn't performing right. the duties, I have a hard time believing the council would remove that person from office. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be very direct. Really? And there's no disrespect to the body, but I, I have a real tough mm -hmm. belief that that person will be removed from office. Oh, you haven't had that, right? So, yeah, or have we? But you, you, your point, well. Terry, though, is, is that you don't have, that you have control. And by basing the selection well, in the voters' hands, you're, you're trying to you're trying to make a stretch. You're stretching the point that, you, that the council still has the control and elected capacity, and it requires for removal of office uh, supermajority. Sue, if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm not saying right. control. We can get rid of somebody. I'm saying we have a job description. We can. How can you hold them accountable to not perform? You can't say you got to be in office certain times or nothing. How nothing how at all. Well, you, well, can, you can say that the office needs to be open from 8 to 5, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the city clerk needs to be in there from 8 to 5. The office has to be open. So it, Somebody has to be in there. Yeah. Well, the assistant. Or it's open. Right. <laughs> you know.
to your point. point. And who is the man is an example. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a clean <laughs> example. And I'm bringing these points up because if this is being taped, the public needs to know that mm -hmm. if they want to keep calling and saying they want to know it, to be in an elected position, this is what. But if there's right. a performance issue that the council thinks that that they should address or they attempt to address it, and the city clerk still says, I, "Okay, fine, I'm I'm still not going to yeah, yeah, yeah. honor it," you know, at some point you're going to have to take action to to. Hold that person accountable. So I guess to the mayor's point, the removal of office, yeah, that's probably what the Nobody bottom would. line would be to to hold that person accountable. It's pretty extreme. I just want to yeah to uh, address something that Tom said about a new mayor coming in. Um, the clerk was considered a department head position, just like Beth is and Tim and uh, Joe. And and those positions are appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the council. And by statute, those uh, those positions can only be removed really for cause or by basically a two thirds vote of the council. So it's it, it, the new, a new mayor can't come in and just say I want someone else. Um, it's kind of presumed that those positions are going to continue, you know, unless there's an issue in the council or the entire or two thirds of the council wants to uh, remove them. For an election <coughs> official, it's kind of it's the same. The common council can remove someone for cause, uh, an elected official for cause. So, and then there's also the recall procedures. Um, I, I hesitate to whether I should say this or not. Go ahead. I, I mean, I think well, well, I said, on, the whole it. elected versus, versus appointed, I mean, I'm actually the only elected <laughs> professional position that remains remains now. But, um, and I personally think the position should be appointed. So I'm kind of speaking against my self-interest here somewhat. There used to be perks for being elected. There was a little bit more in your insurance, or in, in your retirement. There was a better retirement benefit at the end, but that's all gone away, so we're treated pretty much like general employees um, now, instead of ele elected getting something extra. Um, and I think, in the statutes say, I mean, a lot of, some elected officials feel, well, I'm elected by the people, I report to the people. I don't agree with that. I think, I mean, I'm talking about the professional positions, like clerk or attorney or the former treasurer. We are, we are in statutes, we are officers of the corporation. So we have a, I, just like I'm in-house, I think of myself as in-house counsel for the city. I report to the city. If someone constituent calls up, I, I can't represent them, or they can't really tell me what to do. My allegiance is to the city. It's the same way with the clerk. It's a, it's a procedural administrative position for the city. He or she owes their allegiance to the city. It's not, uh, so this whole political thing of that the people I mean, I don't, I don't really get that. I don't certainly don't see that in my position. I don't see that in the clerk's position or in any of the previous positions. The allegiance is to the city, not and and the, the elected versus appointed. That's just the manner of choosing. Once once that's decided, I I I feel that I should be treated just like everyone else. The only caveat is because you're elected, and it's the same with you guys as older persons. I mean, we can't. There's no personnel policies that apply to you. Like you have to. You know, uh, show up from eight to four, or you have to. You know, I mean, what are the host of other? And and likewise, those really don't apply to elected officials. I don't get vacation. I don't get sick days. But I'm expected to. That's why you're here right now. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm expected to be at work. I'm expected to get my job done. And I guess if I wasn't doing that, I would totally expect to be treated just like any other department head. And maybe for cause, you would you would yeah. say, hey, you're not showing up at work, you're not doing your job, um, and I guess I don't see any that I and especially with the way that it's that it's a two thirds majority to get rid of a department head, it, it's I mean I, it's pretty much the same way for uh, yeah, for an elected official to be removed by the council. So in a way, you know, it, it's kind well, of just so we're on record, we're not looking to get rid of anybody. <laughs> And I know that I—that's a different viewpoint than maybe other people that have been in elected positions. I mean, if the mayor asks me to do something, I'm not going to say, "Well, 
you know, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think I'm a department head yes. just like everyone else, and I'm, I want to be part of that team, and that's... And, and I want to go back on the record of saying, you know, I said, if we really feel something about this, that, you can always look at the wage. That wage of a clerk is in line with a clerk in this, you know, in other cities, so that wage is not extravagant, right. so... I don't want to. I don't want to be quoted as saying we should downgrade the clerk's pay. I don't. I don't agree with that. I think that pay is reasonable with what's being paid. Maybe, maybe Beth could share too. Uh, similar municipalities in the state, whether their position <laughs> clerk is appointed or elected. Yeah, I think uh, the survey that I did. I guess it was back in October, so maybe 176 are appointed and 13 are elected around the state. Thank you. I would add one resource on that note because I did some personal conversations and calling, particularly with the municipalities that had struggled with this more recently because I think it's a um, it's a more recent trend as clerks have retired, as they've resigned, as they've left for other, they vacated the position that municipalities have looked at or debated really the elected versus appointed. One really good close example is the city of Marshfield. Um, Steve Barr, the administrator, will have a conversation with you. He's very approachable. Um, you know, and he really talked about the pros and cons, the debate their council had. I don't believe if I'm not mistaken, it wasn't controversial there. It was a, it was actually an animus uh, change, but they didn't. The clerk actually retained the position after it. It was it was interesting why they I, why they did it when they did it. I'm not exactly certain, um, but that would be a good conversation for any of you that wish to have further discussion or are still open minded about sort of the, the, the debate. I would have I would call Steve. Mm -hmm. um, there may be others in in your survey that Beth has done that she might be able to point you to. Uh, you know, and even those that, that have. Go, have debated and not changed. I mean, I think it's important to have the thoughts of other municipalities pull ourselves out of who has served, and I, you know, I'm sick of hearing anybody's names because this isn't about anybody, right? No, it's about it's the about position. position. And so I think at some level we have to remove the personality out of it, and we're so far removed from having a seated clerk anyway that we shouldn't even be mentioning his name. So we should be looking uh, for, the, for the real factual, and I guess maybe to Terry's point, having the meetings tonight is what's the innuendo? What's the concern, the fear, the reasons that you've heard from the public? Because I, I haven't heard a lot, um, you know, why one way or the other. I, I think that's an important question that has been sort of asked tonight, and I think that's a question that should still be asked. So yeah, what's the innuendo? What's the, what, what are you hearing? What are the fears? And let's talk about those. Let's address them. Because the, the real, and this was, this meeting was going to probably be a month ago, but we just couldn't get it together. But. Um, the real issue here is when we come back to the next council meeting, this is going to be on. So we're, we're going to be talking about it or we're going to be voting on it. So I just wanted to the only thing I've, The only thing I've heard from a person is that even if, we, if it stays elected or appointed, <laughs> if it's going to be elected, it's not going to be elected for, what, two more years? Right. So, oh, so we, we, uh, we, we do have to appoint somebody, right? Right. So, right. Yeah. so whether or not we do this as an elected or appointed position, we still have to appoint yeah, somebody yeah. for the next for two years. years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so why can't that be done now? And their, their point was, why can't that be done and this debate go on for a little, for whatever, if you need to debate it. But, but, it, but it, needs to be, it needs to be appointed. Right. It, no matter what. It right. Sort of but the, it goes to the qualifications of the person you choose. If if it's going to be, a, if you want to appoint someone now, the status quo is elected, that person has to live in the city. In the city. Right. Right. And I think that, that was, you know, somewhat of it, like mm -hmm. who, who are the, who's the pool of, app, what are the pool of applicants mm -hmm. that we're looking at, and, you know, what are the qualifications basically for the job. So, but that's that's correct that if you would appoint someone in yeah, the, the city, but once that, once that person is appointed, <coughs> Fulfilling the remainder of of sure. the term, right? Sure. And then I guess that would allow you time sure. to decide later. What is if if it were uh, if it were appointment for an elected position versus an appointment for an appointment appointed position? Is the vetting process different? Well, the mayor is going to would appoint no. for the remainder of the term, and the council would confirm, right? Right. So, I guess it would be in how you want to go about that appointment. My guess is that we 
would do what we just did for the elections coordinator in terms of advertising and right. interviewing. I'm right. assuming that's but how you want to do it. Right. But it would be the same. Be the same. Right. 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 That's, right. That was my question. Yeah. Right. Is, is would the process right. would the process be the same? Mm -hmm. I think that's been Terry's Terry's brought that up a couple of times that in either case, if you walk down the path of appointed versus elected, let's understand the subsequent steps. Let's get over sort of the reasons for it or why. Right. Let's just walk down the path. Mm -hmm. That there would be that same vetting process or very similar. Mm -hmm. if we're going to post and advertise, screen, and then obviously do the, do the post deployment. Now, if it's elected, I don't know if you can put them through the drug screening. And I don't know what sort of, you know, you wouldn't. No, right? and there's be, no qualifications. I mean, let's, so let's, let's, you let's, can't you know, put qualifications semantics, in the but, job description right. if it's elected. Right. It, there's no qualifications in that job description. Um, you don't need any? Well, but you could, you, if it's appointed. I could choose to. Right. Right. Could choose that, right. Right. that would be important right. to him. But when technically, it, yeah, right, as long as that person is a resident of this, an adult really resident. Really, the only qualification, right? Yes. Right. They're a legal citizen and they're. A resident. And and that's that I guess that was part of my question is is if if it were an appointed elected position, would that process be because that's what the, the mayor would request? I mean, really if I understand it correctly, if the decision is that it's going to be an elected position, the mm -hmm. vetting process wouldn't have to take place. It doesn't right? that's it's really just, up to him. Right, right. I mean, and the council's going to have to approve the appointment, so. Right. So but, the I mean, process, he doesn't right. have to do it that way. Yeah, right. I had a thought. I lost. I'm sorry, you better than that all. <laughs> um, I just had a thought. I guess one of the, one of the, the, the main concern from the citizens of the community is, um, I feel that it's a, it's a loss of power because they want to be able to make that decision. But <clears throat> back to what you're saying, you know, how would that help us out if that person shows up, gets in because they're elected in without any qualification? Now, now what? You know, we don't we don't know down the road whether they will have the qualification to to do the job or not, and then you know that's. Four, five, six months yeah, down the road, and then what? Yeah, and I'll be the devil's advocate because I always am, of course. But I, I wasn't, and I'm still not. But I wasn't the best manager 20 years ago or 10 years ago. But I learned as I went on, and you can gain experience. I don't want to pick on you, but you're, you know, you're, you're friend out of college. <laughs> so I mean, you know, and and I don't want to pick on names, or but that position, that clerk position, has been. Man, very ably for the last I don't know 30, 40 years, whatever it's been, but 30 years I would say in this in this city. So, Jim, you better know. How <laughs> has it been, man? Well, um, uh, probably Sue correctly. Uh, just like the mayor's position in yours, there's a minimum of 200 votes, uh, 200 signatures required. At a, right to for an election to, for nominating. To, to place your right. name on the on the paper, mm -hmm. on the nomination for a, mm -hmm. for a clerk right. like you for um, right. okay. and the mayor for the mayor's position um, in the in the period of time that you think about it you've got to get out there and circulate 20, 20 nomination papers and then the clerk's office has to verify that those are indeed uh, proper electors. <laughs> I I think a person just to do that shows good intent and that they would follow up with what is asked of them. I mean, there was Bob Boyarski, Vern Moore, and Shane. Each of them needed to do that in order to serve. And uh, a good friend of mine ran for a county clerk one time. He, he did. He didn't win the election, but still, he was a small businessman. I, I think you would see a person who would like to serve as a clerk as a responsible person, because you have um, roughly five weeks from the first of December to the. 
in this case tonight, to circulate those papers, get in front of people, or have a friend work with you, or even a small committee to work with you to circulate those papers. So I don't believe we would not get someone who is interested in the position if we maintained it as an elected position. I'm not going to get too much because of what happened last time. <laughs> Glad so to have you back. Yeah, we don't. I'd love to get you in there. I need to see you. I just want to get everybody a chance to talk to you. That's why you take these guys. Okay, so I mean, it's just a discussion. I, and maybe I, and I, I could add a couple of people. Go ahead. Um, no, I, are you I, closing I, the discussion? Yeah, no, go ahead. Oh, I was going to just add, ask anybody you know, else that. What have I heard, you know, in terms of uh, fears or concerns since that was kind of raised? Um, I think there's a general fear that. Uh, because the, the position of clerk has evolved so much from when its inception, you know, in the role of governments, that the clerk's role is so much more professional, that the position requires a certain level of expertise and knowledge. They may not have it coming into it, to Terry's point, that they become a better manager as time goes on, of course. Um, but uh, even in the election specialist position, in ensuring that that person will have the appropriate training, skills, and qualifications is a feat because there is a certification. There's a sort of there's a certificate to be a municipal clerk. I mean, you can't screw elections up, so you've got to have some certified elections training. You know, so there's a there's a tremendous amount of certifications. Not to mention all the the regular sort of record keeping and uh, administrative functions for the city. And that's a concern residents have voiced to me in saying, well, you may have somebody that's genuinely interested and genuinely a good person. Uh, has won a popular vote, right? It's a popular vote, uh, but doesn't quite have the skills and aptitude necessary to perform the duties. And at that point, the electorate feels fearful because they'd be stuck with that person, quote unquote, from a resident until the next election. And that's the reality of the elected selection process, right? I'm elected and I love being elected because I believe in that manner of selection. But the position of mayor is a much different position than the city attorney because it's a much more political position. It sets policies, it sets vision and direction. The officers of the city, of the clerk, the attorney, and formerly the treasurer and other positions, are officer positions, right? There are specific functions required of that position for the city to perform. And so I completely understand the residents' concerns as they're voiced to me related to the appointed versus elected selection process, because they very much believe they're fearful as Clearly, other municipalities have been as the reason for their selection or conversion from elected to appointed over the years. That if you don't have an appointed clerk with the skills and qualifications necessary, that you will not have somebody uh, ably able to provide those the service to the city. And of course, I'm disconnecting myself 100% from anybody that's held a position in the past. Uh, I'm just looking forward, and that's I think the conversation needs to continue. Look forward. Um, there are a lot of duties that have been outlined in the job description. I look at them. And I think, you know, I don't know if I would be a qualified clerk. I'll just put myself in that. I could run for clerk tomorrow, and I could be the. I could not be qualified to do the job, but I could win the popular vote, maybe. And so, therefore, you, the city would have me for clerk and, until the next election. And we would remove me if the council had the courage and said, well, you know what, you're probably not performing the duties very well, and now we want to remove you. And then you got to fight the supermajority and remove you from office. So I just feel like. Those are some of the concerns and, and fears that residents have, have shared with me, and I felt I needed to share them with this body tonight. I, it's difficult in the chairman's role in the council meeting to share those thoughts, and I feel like I appreciate, Terry, the opportunity to share them. Uh, yeah, setting like this is more comfortable, and, and, uh, you know, but those are, my, those are my thoughts, and I guess that's what the residents have, you know, kind of, I package them together in, in my comments. And with, with that being said, anybody else got anything? So that that was really the reason. I mean, we want obviously I want to get Kurt and his group in here, but item three we're just going to talk about for about two seconds. That's you know, just a bullet point I want to talk about. But next council meeting, this is going to be on the docket, and I just want to be out and have open conversation about it. We did it. You guys can certainly reach out to Marshfield or wherever, check out it. The numbers are correct. I've seen those numbers how many times, and I've even checked them myself. I'm not that good. I, you know, I <laughs> yeah, and I've even checked them myself. So, uh, <laughs> it's okay. What are one seventy six? What fourteen? Thirteen? Thirteen? The numbers are right. So the next um, common council meeting, we're going to vote on this updated draft 
No, no, no. 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 Unless the there's an agenda. This is what we passed the last week. The point, you know, just. But I just want this out because I always, you know. They, they said it's not a job description, but there really is. There's there is a well, lot in there. Well, this is there's, a it's revised every, job yeah. description. I mean, it was kind of a bare bones job yeah. description previously, so it's Yours is probably revised. six pages long, but. Yeah, it's two. Who's <laughs> playing it? So. It's a um, next temporary assignment. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I will tell Mike, even though we didn't have a finance meeting tonight, I'm guessing we'll probably have something before the next council meeting. You will. Uh, there was something on yeah, well, the, today that came up that I think. Narcotics. We, Detective. Well, well, there's that, sure. Or right, it will be before that, maybe even. It could be next mm -hmm. week, even, so just so you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, item three was um, council member training. I just I just feel that, you know, we got the elections coming up, so we'll probably hold off, and, but we haven't done any training since, you know, I haven't done any since I was elected.